keep on, keep on picking me. And I want to say, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yes, thank you to send me. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Thank you.
anybody know that God has smiled on you? Anybody know that he has set you free? Beloved, we welcome to our cyber sanctuary of the Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church located here at 1601 Magnolia Road here in West Charlotte, Alabama, known as Lynette, where just a few of God's children are gathered together to lift up the name of Jesus, to let you know that God has smiled on us. He has set us free. We're going to raise that praise up a little bit more, but as we're raising the praise, we want you to simply just type in the names of those who you want us to pray for, those who stand in the need of a blessing right now, all over the sanctuary, we're going to stand, we're going to live up that song, God has smiled on me. Whoa, God, smile. Grandmama taught me this a long time ago. She said, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now.
to pray for me. Because all day and all night angels are watching over me. Any, anybody know that? I, I'm, yeah. It's hard on every pastor around here. I've been the janitor. I have opened up this church. I have closed up this church. I've been a trustee of this church. I need some men to step up. Because I'm tired. And when this pandemic is over, I'm going on the sabbatical. But right now, I need y'all to strength, pray for my strength that I keep this church together. Oh, 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 oh,
how truly our God is an on time God and he's worthy of all our praise glory and adoration thank God for these singers sister Tally Flinois, sister Sonya Adams sister Vivian Nellums thank God always for our musicians brother Carl Harper brother Earl E.J. Johnson brother Wendell Brooks amen sister Jaquasia Pilar who's helping us on our media today and there ought to be a thank you Lord in your spirit as we go to Psalm 61 in its entirety hit that share button Psalm 61 in its entirety Lord, I just want to say thank you oh you want me to be played in for sir we would see Jesus this is thy servant prayer in Jesus name amen Psalms number 61 in its entirety simply says the prayer of a troubled heart notice what David says to the Lord hear my cry O God attend unto my prayer from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to the rock that is higher than I for thou hast been a shelter for me a strong tower from the enemy I will abide in thy tabernacle forever I will trust thee in the comfort of thy covered of thy wings. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows, thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O prepare, O prepare mercies and truth which may preserve him. So I will sing praises unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. Verses 1 and 2 again. Verse 1, 2, and 3. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, 
lead me to the rock that is higher than I for thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from my enemies and I just want to talk about for the next little while our strong tower our strong tower my brothers and sisters this is a prayer for security assurance David says I, I need to pray to God for security I need to pray for him for assurance wherever we are we can trust that God will be there to answer all of our cries now we don't know because this is a prayer that David prayed after 2 Samuel chapters 15 through 18 we don't know if David was running from King Amalek or running from his rebellious son by the name of Absalom. We don't know why David had to flee, why David went to where he went. We know that David is millions of miles away from home and his heart is troubled and he's looking for God to answer his prayer. One more time, I said David is either running from his son Absalom or either running from King Ambulance, but we don't know which one David is running from because you do know that David had a rebellious son who wanted to sleep with his own sister and even wanted to kill David because he was rebellious. So David is now running to a place by himself and he needs God to answer our prayers. Have you ever been there that you had to run somewhere, that you had to go somewhere to get from everybody just to get into the presence of God and you want God to put his wings of protection over you that you need God to show up sooner than soon, quicker than quick. I don't want to talk to my family I don't want to talk to my friends I only want to talk to you God because God you are the only one that can heal me right now God you are the only one that can sustain me right now don't act like I'm up here by myself me and David ain't the only one that has some troubles in Tuesdays that has some wicked Wednesdays that we had to go to a place that's higher than us that we had to go to our strong tower that we had to go to a place of shelter we had to go to a place of of safety and say God if you don't answer my prayer I don't know what's going to happen David David, in this song just as many other songs I told you most of David's songs start off with him having a sad heart and I know you got your halo on I know you holier than us and you wonder why how can David a man at the God's own heart always be sad I know you want to, David, a man at the God's own heart, he should always have joy, but can I tell you that when you are on God's side, weeping is going to come. When you are on God's side, trouble going to come. When you are on God's side, that's the time the enemy really wants you because you on God's side. See, if the devil ain't messing with you, it's because he already got you. But see, I know I'm on the Lord's side. That's why he always saying hell my way. That's why he's always sending storms my way because when you you on the Lord's side. You got to stand on God's promises. John chapter 16 verse number 33. Be of good cheer because in this life you're going to have trials and tribulation but don't you worry. Don't you fret. I've already overcome the world. Come here Jesus. Jesus said Lamar they ain't doing it because of who you are. They doing it because of who you are and when you're a child of the most high God storms are going to come your way. Trouble going to come your way. Sickness going to come your way but you got to have a joy spirit and say yet though he slay me I will still trust him I'm trying to tell y'all the reason why a lot of us as born again baptized believers go through some stuff it is God trying to get your, your family members attention because you keep on wondering why, why you God is saying I'm using you to call a family reunion I'm using you to get some people saved so you gotta stand on the wall and you can't come down yes you may get tired yes you may get weary but stand on the wall cause Nehemiah Maya tell me the joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, David has a, has a sad heart while he's pending this. He says, hear my cry. Oh God, and attend unto my prayer. Sometimes you just got to get ugly with your prayers. I ain't talking about these little 
cute cries that we do when we pat our eye. Sometimes you got to go before God ugly. You got to go before God snot nose. You got to go before God prostrate before him and saying, God, it's just me and you. I ain't got a plan B. I ain't got a, I ain't got an ace in a hole. God, it's just me and you. And I need you to show me that my living is not in vain. I need you to show me that my work is not in vain. Come on, I need some real Christians because you don't get tired because you don't get tired of being in that house. You don't been tired because you can't go on vacation. You don't got tired because you can't see your friends and your loved one so sometimes you gotta lay prostrate before God and say God it's just me and you mama gone granny gone daddy gone God it's just me and you so show me that you're still with me David David says he says I got a I got a sad heart uh, but my conclusion ends differently can I tell you the bend of the road and the end of the road unless you miss around and miss the curve. One more time. Uh, uh, it is, it is uh, the DOT Michigan dot, Michigan dot, Michigan Department of Transportation put a survey out on why on the highway they got so many hills and curves in the road. Wendell, they put a survey out because they know that if we keep the road straight, for so many miles, the driver will get sleepy, the driver will get bored, and the driver will fall around and go to sleep. So they put heels in the road. They put bends in the road. Y'all missed it. That's why God got to put some bends and some heels in your world, because you'll mess around and start sleeping on God. You'll mess around and stop praying to God. So God said, I got to put this in your life to get you to pray. I got to put this in your life to show you that I'm still God. I got to put this in your life. Ain't nobody talking to me. So David says, every now and then, God will have to put trouble in my life to let me know yes I am the anointed king but yet being the king I still got to trust in him and not in myself one more time I got to rewind in my mind that's why God put trouble in your life and my life to let us know it ain't about us it's about him okay y'all 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 didn't like that y'all didn't like that one uh, so th this psalms uh, would have fit many occasions in David's life when he was distraught from fighting numerous enemies. David had to fight many enemies. So uh, verses 1 through 2, he offers his petition. Uh, and that's what we got to learn how to do. We got to petition ourselves before God. See, see you, see, I, I want to go back to the old days where the deacons would bring out that folding chair. I want to go back to the old days where the deacons would kneel down and pray and the church would catch on fire. See, we got to watch how we position ourselves before God. See, hey, you ain't the only one because you done got a few letters before and behind your name. You done changed your zip code so you can't come to us as church, but us as church still got a relationship with God. Can, can, I, can I show y'all something? Uh, uh, yesterday, yesterday, I, I went to Atlanta, and I, I went to Atlanta, and I just, just felt like driving. And I, I passed World Changes Ministry, uh, the church where Creflo Dollar pastors, and it's right there in the hood. I, 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 I would have thought that Creflo would have had his church in a, in a better neighborhood, but it's right there in the hood, down the street from the National Highway Fleet Market. There, you see World's Changer, but I looked at World's Changer, and I looked at Creflo, and I looked at myself, and I said, Creflo is doing the same thing I gotta do. He gotta stand before a camera, he gotta stand in a half-empty room, and declare the word. Where he once had a sanctuary full, now he gotta sit at his desk, and look at a camera, and talk to millions of people you missed it it's about your position that you have before God it's how you go before God whether you got five folks or no folks you still got to go before God boldly whether you got a hundred folks or zero folks you still got to declare that he's still God so preachers stand on the wall whether they want to hear you in season or out of season stand on the wall let them know that the earth still belongs to the Lord let them know that God is still in control let them know that everything going to be all right. He says, he says he offers his position. Number, verses three through five, he expresses his trust in the Lord. Notice what he says. He says, he says, God, you have been a shelter for me. Uh, uh, not only have you been a shelter, but you've been my strong tower from my enemies. God, uh, 
this ain't nothing new between me and you. You done, you done healed me before. You done set me free before. You done got me out of the hand of a lion and a bear. You done got me out of hand before the Philistine giant. You done got me out of the hands of many people. So God, right now, I need you to do it again. Get me out of those hands. My enemies are after me. So God, I need you to show me your glory. Okay, y'all don't like that. Nah. He says, he says, he says, I'm expressing my trust in you. Right there, verse number five. Number four, he says, I would abide in your tabernacle. And beloved, I, I know that, that everybody can't come to church, but you ought to find you a tabernacle. First of all, you do know that this body is a living tabernacle, holy, except unto God. So in your own personal tabernacle, you ought to have a one-on-one -on -one experience with God. You ought to start praying to God. You ought to let God know how much you love him. Let God know how much you adore him. Let God know how much you appreciate him. David says, not only is my position, my petition right, but my trust is even better. Uh, uh, verses 6 through 7, he says, he says, he says, no, verse 6 through 7, he says, I'm going to pray for the prolonged life of my kingship. God, I don't know how long uh, the night is going to be. I don't know how long I got to go through this, but Lord, just let me live long enough to get out of this. And I, and I know that's some of y'all prayer. Lord, just let me live long enough to get out of this pandemic. Lord, let me live long enough to get out of COVID-19. But I need to tell y'all, beloved, if, if I don't live to see the end of COVID-19, just know that serving the Lord has paid off for me. Just, just know that the work that I've done has been all right. Just know that my ticket is in my hand and I got a relationship with the master. So if he called me before we gather together again, everything going to be all right. I'm like David. I got my business fixed. I got my heart right. I got the Bible in my heart. Anybody other than the preacher know that the Bible is hidden in your heart, that you ain't got to sin against nobody. Anybody know that you got a real relationship with him? See, some of y'all just religious, but I got a relationship with the master. I got a relationship with him that I can call him and he an answer. How do you know that you call him? Because I called on the Lord and I got an answer. Says, he says, not only, not only uh, would I pray, but right here, verses, verse eight, eight, you got to give a daily thanksgiving. See, see, verse number one, he starts off praying, but verse eight, he ends up praising. Uh, y'all miss it. That's this is why I tell y'all when you when you pray, you better put a praise behind it. One more time. Why, 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 Reverend? Why do I? Because I'm praising God for what he's getting ready to do. What he's about to do. Y'all know how we used to pray, Lord, thank you for this food we're about to receive. I haven't tasted it yet. I haven't ate of it yet, but I'm thanking you for what I'm about to receive. So when I pray to God, I gotta put a praise on it for what he's getting ready to do. See, and when I pray for those who are sick, I'm praising already for the healing because I know he's gonna heal either on this side or the other side. Y'all missed it already. See, healing comes through death. Healing comes on this side. So whatever way he wanna heal, I'm satisfied. So when you pray unto God, put a praise on it. I got I got, I got, I got three little points and I got to go. Point number one, he will call upon God because God had protected him. And that's the reason why you ought to call on God. Because you serve a God who's protected. That's the ED, that's past tense. He's protecting you from some dangerous scene and unseen. He protects you from last Sunday to this Sunday. So you ought to praise God for just being your protector. Okay, okay, because millions went to sleep last night with firecrackers going off and somebody's house caught on fire, but yet yours didn't. Because he's a protector. And I ain't saying that God didn't protect them because the story was told. Let me tell you this story, how God works. <clears throat> there was a boy, his mama, and his dad. Their house caught on fire. And the mama was crying. And the boy was crying. But the daddy was smiling. They didn't understand it. So finally, the little boy went to his daddy and said, Daddy, mama's crying. I'm crying. But you're smiling. Little boy, daddy looked at the son and said, Son, 
just last month, I upgraded our homeowner's insurance. And they told me if our house was to catch on fire due to an act of God, they'd give us a new house and replace everything in the house. See, son, this house is old and it got some wear and tears on it, but I'm thanking God and smiling from a new house. And that's how you ought to wake up every day thanking God for his new mercies, thanking God for his eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered to the heart of men the things that God got in store for you. So if you get in a car accident, it ain't nothing but a thing. If somebody vandalized your property, it ain't nothing but a thing because God got something better for you. Okay, okay, uh, let me talk about me because you don't like me to talk about you, so let me talk about me. See, I use stuff till I can't use it no more. And God sometimes has to destroy something of mine to make me throw it away. Okay, I, I said I'm talking about me. Huh. I, I had this one shirt uh, that I love to wear that shirt. And, and so I was messing with an ink pen. And the ink pen exploded on the cuff of that shirt. You know what I did? I shouted it out. I scrubbed it. I bought some Oxy uh, Clean, put it in the washing machine. The stain still didn't come out. I did it again, took it to the dry cleaner this time, had the dry cleaner do the same thing. Stain still wouldn't come out. I said, no, this is my favorite shirt. I got to keep this shirt. I got to hold on to this shirt. And, and, and finally, uh, my pastor said, man, ain't no hope for that shirt. Throw that shirt away. And when I threw that shirt away, you know what happened? Somebody blessed me with five more shirts. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. This, see, this is before I became y'all pastor. This is when I was living in Ypsilanti, when I was living from paycheck to paycheck, when I only had three suits and four shirts. So I loved that shirt. But because I finally decided to throw that shirt away, somebody else was ready to bless me. Come here. Let me sneak in your back door. The more you keep your hand open, the more people want to bless you. Stop walking around with your hand closed and walk around with your hand up because somebody is waiting on to bless you. And the reason why I always say you can't be God's giving because the more I give, the more it comes back to me. Okay, 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 okay. Number two, number one, he says he will call upon God because God has protected him. Number two, he will call upon God because God had provided well from him. God didn't just provide, but he provided well. See, you got to learn how to play on words. That's why you got to spend time with the dictionary. Because when God provides for you, it's good and it's well. See, you may provide for me and it's all right, but when God provides for me, can't nobody take it from me? Can't nobody give it to me? See, see, when God opens doors for you, can't nobody close. And when God closes doors, can't nobody open them for you. So David says, I got to praise God because he provided well for me. Come here, it's right there. He says, God, you have been my shelter. You have been my strong tower. You have protected me from my enemies. Come here, Psalms number 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life of whom I shall be afraid. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me and the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me now he shall put my head and lift my head up above my enemies when my enemies came to eat me they stumbled and fell y'all missed it that, you ought to thank God that when folks try to trap you they'll fall you ought to thank God that he'll protect you you ought to thank God that he'll provide for you point number three and I gotta go he says number one he will call upon God because God has protected him upon God because God has provided well for him. Number three, he will praise God because he had an assurance of the continuation of God's favor unto him. Uh, Y'all missed that. He had the assurance of the continuation of God's favor unto him. Notice what he says in verse number six. I will pray a prolonged life for many generations. So, so we know that David is not going to die in wherever he is because God promised him that he'll have a long life. Okay, y'all missed it. Sometimes you got to just shout 
over the promises that God has given unto you. Notice why Paul couldn't die because Jesus told Paul, you're going to live a while longer. So when Paul was shipwrecked, beaten, bitten by poisonous snakes, Paul knew that he wasn't going to die because the Lord had showed him something. And you ought to stand on the promises of God that if God tells you something, you ought to believe it. You ought to stand on God's word that if you honor your mother and your father, your days shall be long. You ought to stand on the word of God that if you keep his covenant and his commandments, he'll give you a prosperous life. You ought to stand on the promises of God. Anybody other than me, I ain't talking about standing on the premise I'm talking about standing on the promises because when you read the word of God you'll know that the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want when you learn how to stand on the promises of God you can say I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me when you stand on the promises of God Philippians 4 19 but my God shall supply all of my needs when you stand on the promises of God you'll know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper when you stand on the promises of God you know that you got a comforter that's working on the inside when you stand on the promises of God you know that you got a God that sits high and look low when you stand on the promises of God you'll know that Jesus will come and see about you when you stand on the promises of God you can put pen to paper and say what a friend we have in Jesus when you stand on the promises of God anybody other than David and the preacher gonna stand on God's promises because I'm gonna stand on his promise because his promise say he a never leave me nor forsake me come on let's ride y'all anybody other than me want to stand on his promise anybody other than me that know that he's your Jehovah Jireh anybody other than me know that he's your Jehovah Shalom anybody other than me that know he's your Jehovah Nisi anybody other than me know he's your Jehovah Rapha well Johnson how did he become all this well let me tell you what my grandmama told me when I was seven years old she said boy servant of the Lord has paid off a big mama and is going to pray off for you because my grandmama didn't have good English like me. She didn't have an education like me. So she'll say stuff like this. I know the Lord will make a way. And then she'll come back and say somehow. I don't know how he's going to do it but he's going to make a way. And my grandmama taught me a long time ago that he, he'll be your ba ba battle axe in a time of a battle. He'll be a bridge over troubled waters. He'll be a help in a time of storm. I wish I had somebody in here that knew that serving the Lord would pay off after a while. Let me go to my childhood when I was a little boy on Christmas day. My grandmama got laid off from St. Joe's uh, hospital and she didn't know how she was going to pay the bill. So my grandmama began to wash clothes and she said the washing machine simply said all day and all night angels is watching over me and my grandmama said when she went to start cooking the oven started singing to her all day and all night angels are watching over me and she said there was a knock on the door and there was a family going around passing out groceries passing out money and they said the Holy Ghost told us to stop by here and my grandmama said when she got the groceries and she got the check in the memo of the check it said all day all night the angels keep watching over me and I just stopped by here to tell somebody we got a shelter in Jesus we got to learn how to call on his name and if you call him he will answer is there anybody here that want to help me call on him I double dog dare you wherever you are if you're in your bedroom, if you're in your living room, if you're in your kitchen, or if you're in your car, just start calling his name because the Bible says his name will soothe your doubts, his name will calm your fears. Is there anybody here that want to help me call his name? Jesus the lily of the valley Jesus my bright morning star I feel my helper here now anybody here ever been sick and you had to call his name had to show up I stopped by here to tell somebody that he'll show up 
and when he showed up he got a way of showing out anybody here know what happened on a hill called Calvary he died is there anybody that know he died he died till the sun refused to shine he died till the moon went down in blood he died till the earth began to reel and rock surely he died but that ain't the end of the story anybody here know that early I said early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands is there anybody that know he got up well since he got up you ought to get up since he got up you ought to let the world know that can't nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody rock me like Jesus can't nobody hold me like Jesus is there any body in here that don't mind helping the preacher out don't you touch nobody but point to yourself and tell yourself say self everything gonna be alright I got a feeling everything gonna be alright do me another favor don't you touch nobody but point to your neighbor and say neighbor better is on the way I don't believe they hurt you find you one more neighbor and say neighbor better is on the way well if you're by yourself start typing it on Facebook and say better is on the way how do you know Johnson he wouldn't bring us through it if he wouldn't bring us to it and I got a feeling this thing is about to turn around I know the numbers are high but I got a feeling I got a feeling it's about to turn around I don't know when I don't know where but he's getting ready to turn it around your sickness turn it around your hardship turn it around lonely days turn it around sleepless nights turn it around won't he do it won't he do it won't he do it won't he hold your hand won't he guide your feet won't he tell you that everything gonna be all right oh shucks i done slipped around got in my happy zone i know that i'm getting ready to get on the highway and y'all saying reverend that's too much for you to do by yourself but i ain't going by myself goodness and mercy are going to ride with me. Jesus is going to drive me. And God going to watch over me. And the Holy Ghost is going to hold me. Anybody here know something about goodness? Something about mercy? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Sire! Sire! <laughs> sins of omission my sins of commission 
save me as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Savior Jesus Christ come on let's bow Father forgive us of our sins if you find anything that shouldn't be take it out and strengthen us because Lord we want to be right we want to be made whole now God bless these elements the fruit of the vine and your body this we pray in Jesus name amen
us break bread together. Bread on our knees. Come on, let us. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ let us bow and eat together the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ let us bow and drink together Listen, beloved, we, we never beg, we never beg. If you want to sow a seed into this ministry, you simply can download Give a Five, look up Mount Herman Baptist Church, Lynette, Alabama, or you can use our P.O. box, or you can simply drop it off from the hours of 1215 to 115 every Sunday. Again, we never beg, but if you want to sow a seed into this ministry, use those three ways. Give a Five, Mount Herman Baptist Church, Lynette, Alabama, or use our P.O. box or simply bring it by the church through the hours of, one, of 12, 15 to 1, 15 every Sunday. Now listen, beloved, uh, I need you to listen attentively. Uh, I'm going to do Bible study this Wednesday. Now Sunday, I may preach from a different church, but Mount Herman will still use Mount Herman's face page. I don't know yet. So don't get mad. Still come by, twelve fifteen to one fifteen. Drop off your offering. If I'm back, you will know I'm back. But if not, we're still going live, and I'm going to use a different sanctuary. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father, we say thank you for worship. Thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. Thank you for being God and God up by yourself. We love you, we magnify you, we extol and exalt your name. This is thy servant prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful day.